We got some discovery to do. We got to find out. I don't know if you guys could hear this noise we're hearing right now, but I'm slightly concerned for whoever's over here. Is it a welcome back if you never left? Either way, we're here for day four of Vlogmas and we're at Cat Hollow, another North Austin staple. This one's a mainly par three course on the shorter side, a good course for all levels of player. A lot of crushed granite throughout, so it will kind of rip your disc up a bit if you're worried about whatever particular disc, you know, or you want to come beat in a disc. Could be a good course to come play. If you already forgot, I'm Connor O'Reilly with Team Lone Star Disc and Team OTB Discs. And today, I'm excited to run some aces out here at Cat Hollow and try to score low. Hole one's a par three at 240 feet, and it, like a lot of holes on this course, are gonna be blind off the tee. If it's your first time playing here, it's probably a good idea to walk to the corner, get a, a, get a feel for where the basket's at so you can triangulate the angle you wanna throw at. This big tree here on the left side with the power lines on the left of it, though, if you're going forehand is the one that you just gotta fade in front of. Make sure to give it enough height so it doesn't get caught up in the thick, bushy cedar trees. I'm going Chupacabra. Make sure to give it the height, spike it down. That was a little bit wide left, but I should be putting on the edge of circle one or so. I hung this one a little bit wide and got caught up on the tree canopy trying to fade back there. Got a low ceiling putt. Ooh, this is probably a course where it's not a bad idea to have some kind of a, a knee pad or something to put your knee down on, whether it's a towel or something, of course, within the PDGA rule standards. Could give you a little cushion. And I mentioned that the crushed rock can kind of tear your disc up a little bit, but the great part about it is it makes this course extremely playable regardless of the wetness conditions. A lot of courses throughout Austin, it's wet especially will go up the street, something like that. It, it's really unplayable because of the mud, but this one, the mud stays away, it's just the rocks, so playable in all conditions. Watch your step. Oh, I just took that spider web in the face, you're welcome. If you're ever the trail breaker, not a bad idea to have a stick in your hand. At 200 feet dead straight, this one is a classic fishing line bait hole. I'm trying to get you to run that ace but it drops off behind the basket, leaving you with a tough putt if you do juice it. But I can't say no to that. Look at it, it's just sitting there waiting for you. I think we're going penny putter. Could go penny putter, or I could go blue bonnet on a little anti-flex just to come in with a softer line. I think I'm gonna try the blue bonnet on this one. The soft plastic should have a better time gripping the ground if I do miss long. And the slight force over line that I can throw with it, whereas the penny's gonna be dead straight, I can kind of come in with a little bit more touch. Yeah, just like that, I can kind of pull over the top with the force ante come down a little bit more gentle, whereas the flat shot's gonna be penetrating straighter as it slows down. Like I mentioned, once you clear that little hill in front of the basket, there's another drop off and looks like I might've plopped over it, even though I felt like I came in with good pace control. Yeah, just right there on the, the backside here. Classic bait hole, good design I feel like. All right, so far, Two putts at Cat Hollow. Both of them have had to get to a knee to optimize my line. I think that goes to show you a little bit about the theme of this course. Actually looks like I gotta kinda stand up because this branch is right where I wanna swing my hand. Kinda gotta go to a chest putt here. Make sure to get that finger pop. Oh, man, caught a bit of this branch and some of the foliage coming through. So far, it's 
two tough looks at birdie here at Cat Hollow. Leaves me at even par through two. Hole three is 290 feet straight ahead effectively, but you have to swing it around the branches of this large tree here. Kind of coming out flat with an overstable disc is gonna open up this line the most, or even a little bit of turn on something that you really know is gonna fade. I'm gonna go with the horny toad. I think it should range out pretty perfectly. Just make sure I give it some turn, give it some height. Pay you back for me. Yeah, pin high right there. Even a little bit deep, putting back at it. There we go. Blue bonnet finding the chains there. Grabbed our first birdie of the round here on hole three. Time to get off to the races. Hole four is 365 feet, another blind hole. This one has this mound in front of us, blocking side of the basket, but it's essentially dead straight. You can see that big dead tree kind of straight ahead a little bit to the right. And if you fade in front of that, you should be close to the basket. I'm gonna take my Texas Ranger, utilize this tailwind, play a little hyzer flip. Haven't thrown this hole in a couple years, so let's see if I remember where it's at. Stay. I really like the feel of that. Might be just left of the basket, but let's find out. The basket's definitely tucked a bit closer to the trunk of that tree than I previously thought. So because of that, I found myself here in circle two. Coming back at it. I'm loving the dependable fade on the blue bonnet. You get to trust it out to the right of the basket and knowing it's coming back. And then this Victor one, sorry, Victor two plastic is gripping the chains so nicely. Hole five is one of, I believe, the only two par fours on this track. 540 feet, you really have to put it up with some height and have it hold from the left to the right throughout the flight. I'm gonna take my straighter Warbird and really make sure to set that angle and commit. <laughs> I well overturned that and had it too low. I think if I had more height, even just more height and more off to the left, I would have really gone far. But yeah, I turfed this guy, had a good amount of speed left on it by the time it got to the ground, I'm sure. Short approach, perfect time to show off the horny toad. Oh yeah, trusted it out, gave it a little bit of nose up, a little bit of turn, fought back pretty hard at the end for a close birdie look. And that's how to birdie hole five, even with a turfed tee shot. Just get you a horny tub, makes it easy. Hole six, you can see just hiding right around that left edge, 230 feet, it's another par three, Throw it straight, have a gentle finish left at the end, but really all you gotta do is go dead straight and have the pace control, and you'll have a look here. I'm gonna go with that Victor One blue bonnet. Hit it flat. It's got some good stability that it'll show late in the flight. Great stability on that thing. Could have hung it even wider. Might have had a chance at ace. There you go, there's a birdie on six. Got this beautiful oak tree right here and loving memory of Cooper. Live on, Coop. Hole seven is a 220 foot par three and where the last hole finished to the left at the end, this one tucks around to the right. Forehand or backhand, pick your poison on this shot. 
I'm gonna go penny putter, force the turn out of the hand, and I'll let y'all grab it out of the chains for me. On my birdie putt, of course, that's what I was talking about, not, not off the tee, so don't get ahead of yourselves. Cat Hollow for the third time in seven holes, making me putt from a knee. This course has character. Oh, I spoke too soon about that birdie putt. I thought I hit the next set of rocks, so I'm not gonna lie to you guys. A little bit of overturn out of the hand. Ooh, that's a cool one. One of the many reasons Cat Hollow is gonna ch chunk your discs up is there's a lot of flint or chert out here creating little blades to slice you up. <sighs> Gotta mark my disc, you know, mark the lie. <sighs> Don't forget to breathe. You ever tried that? Flip it over the rim, trick your buddies out, they think they're gonna get a stroke on you. And you just lips right on over. Trick shot 101, next time you're playing horse in the backyard, you just gotta make sure you hit it with the nose down enough that it's just gonna flip over and you gotta hit it on the lower half of the disc so that there's enough momentum to come over the top. One more time for y'all. Rejection. Hole eight presents a 304 foot par three. Tucked off to the left side, you gotta push it straight for the first portion of the flight and have a gentle finish. I'm gonna go midi. Can maybe bump down to the Artemis if I wanted to, but I wanna get an ace. So why not play the slightly longer disc of the same stability? Pop up. Should be pretty close. I think I slid right next to the pole. We'll see if it's deep or not. Just as predicted, slithered, slithered right past the pole for the birdie. I think this one was, felt like it was losing a couple chains or something. I don't know, they were acting light. Hole nine's 220 feet, dead straight. There's some trouble long and left and really all the way surrounding. So play this one to the basket. And if you take an ace run, you might have a hairy putt. You know, we can't resist though. Going penny putter here, alpha plastic, nice and stiff. Did it, come on, fade. Oh my God, that was. So much good about that throw, everything but in the basket. If I had like two degrees more hyzer, that was ace. All right, once again, I can either putt from my chest or get down on the knee. At this point, I've thrown more knee putts than standing putts, so I guess this is my new style. There it is. Trust it, get the nose up. Didn't want to leave this birdie behind. On to the back nine. Hole 10 is a bomber's delight. Some people call it the candy cane hole because of this pipe hanging out of the ground. Looks like a candy cane. Used to be a bit brighter red. It's kind of deteriorated over time. It's a 505 foot par four, so very reachable. I'm gonna take my stable warbird, force it over, let it fight. Wow. We can slide up to the pole job. Call me the T6 Texan bomber, that's me. Some might say this is a tweener hole and maybe it's not a true par four. Some might say this is the first real eagle of Vlogmas. Which camp are you in? Let us know in the comments. That was a half looker, it was fake. Hole 11's on the longer side out of the par threes here at Cat. 400 feet straight ahead through these bushy trees. You can take the towering backhand hyzer 
if you have the power, but it definitely adds some extra distance. I'm gonna take my flat warbird, play the forehand out to the left. See if I got that big boy forehand distance on. This for you, Chandler. Felt pretty good about it. I'm gonna guess circle's edge short or so. We'll find out. A Little bit of headwind as we got out here. I'm gonna say that's the reason I'm not in circle one. Blue bonnet. Trust the fade. It was there, I just didn't give it the spin. I don't know about that metalless bit. I'm gonna have to pick up my focus on the next one. Hole 12's 310 feet, it's a par three. Tucked just to the left there out of sight. Essentially straight off the tee though. You gotta beat that one tree hanging out on the right side at about 60 feet to really give yourself a close look. And let's see if I can get a chupacabra there. These things have legendary beef. It's gonna take a full grunt here. Grunt meter charged. Ah. Oh, full grunt, and that thing landed right at the base of the basket. All right, starting to figure out my range on those chups. Let's get the just long here. Anytime putting from on top of the basket, higher in elevation, I make sure to lower my aim point, try to get down low in that cage. Another birdie. Hole 13, 226, pretty wide open. Got the big tree on the right blocking the hyzer shots. But if you wanna throw a backhand turnover or a forehand, really it's a pick your poison shot. Mr. Squirrel, what do you think we should throw? I could go Walker. I could go Horny Toad. I'm gonna go Toad, I think it's the play. Alpha horny toad, firm on hyzer. Fade hard. Oh yeah, right behind and I got another <laughs> low ceiling kneeling putt probably. Oh, y'all know the drill, back to the knee again. Big guy in a little hole. That's how I feel at this course. Hole 14, another blind one, 216 feet. You can use that telephone post in the back as an aim point, and as long as you're about 30 feet short of that, you should be right on the basket. Great for a spiking forehand. I'm gonna take my Delta II Horny Tone, release it on about 45 degrees of hyzer, a little bit of height. Felt good about it. I'm gonna say it's on the deep right side of the basket. Let's see how much I know this course. You're welcome. All right, maybe only 25 feet to the post in the back, but you get the drill. That's your aim point, fade in front of it. Probably should throw a horny toad if you're smart. And you should probably put with the bloom on it because I just missed that putt, but the putter plastic is so good. that I grip those chains. Found a way in. And look at that cute little stamp. Who doesn't want to dream of blue bonnets during the winter time? Hole 15, 204 feet. Pretty much throw the same shot as the last hole, except for this time, that telephone post is gonna be 45, 40 feet short right of the basket, so. Same disc, same shot. This one, those telephone wires, I have seen come into play quite a few times, so you get, gotta get a little dicey, shave a wire here and there. Well, there you go. There's the recipe for success on 14 and 15. Play the same shot and understand where the post is in relation to the basket. You're welcome for that pro tip. 
Hole 16 is gonna be the shortest of the final three holes, 196 footer. Very specific though, technical gap here. You gotta hug that inside left side with something overstable on hyzer and get it to dump left at the end of the flight. I'm going horny toad on fan grip. Oh, that last crossbar just stole my chances at birdie. Oh, no I didn't, I've always got a chance. All right, busting the Dillo back out. Thinking this is a good chance to try to toss it in. Dang, felt pretty good out of the hand. <laughs> That's what I should've done, the jump step through though. The armadillo is definitely one of those situational discs, but I think if you're trying to give something a soft approach at the basket and sit close, could be a good option for you. Hole 17 has to be one of the more difficult birdies to score out here. 342 feet, you gotta push it straight, restricted ceiling through this gap, and you need a massive flare skip. It goes across a little creek and up onto a mounded green. So it's hard to get up on, on a circle one. It's pretty rare here. I'm gonna go Seguin, trust it through this gap, flat, maybe touch a hyzer, see if I can get a big skip out of it. Give me the skip. Oh, caught those rocks there and kind of straight skipped it versus getting that flare off. Might have a long 80 foot bit or so. All right, I'm gonna try to float one in with the gnome here. Oh yeah, bullseye tapper for the par. And honestly, this is a par I'm fine with. It's a tough hole and I got some bad ground play off that rock. If I could have landed a little further, even then I likely would have skipped into this wall of stuff. So not a really realistic birdie on this one unless you can just hit the perfect nose up drive to float up over this stuff. And even then you're probably gonna cruise the basket. So it's a tough one. Out of any of the greens on the course, this is probably the one where if you had one, I can guarantee myself a tap in. This might be the green, especially if it's windy. I've seen some bad reactions, rollouts off of this one. So put it close here on 17. Take your par. If you get birdie, write home to your friends about it. Hole 18 here at Cat Hollow is once again a blind hole, 260 feet this time. Got to play it up straight. There's a cluster of trees beyond this one on the left, framing the gap. And if you can make contact with one of those trees, you should be sitting with a circle's edge putt. I'm gonna go horny toad, delta two plastic, try to give it some height. See if I can get lucky, find a gap. Kind of just a wall of trees on the right side of the green here. Feels like it's on the short side putting. Not having played this course in a little while, I kind of forgot that intimate knowledge of the back side of the green being the more open side. That whole back pin high and beyond side is wide open, nothing in your way, whereas everything short and left has some trees to deal with. Flexibility is important in all sports and in life. So move your body. <laughs> I don't know what this guy's singing over here, but he kind of got me, I'm not going to lie. All day. <laughs> My man's getting deep in his vocal range, and I know I can appreciate the commitment level, if anything. All right, and there we have it. That'll be it for Cat Hollow. Another staple in the North Austin disc golf scene, mainly par threes, a couple par fours mixed in. It's a quick play and it plays well in poor conditions. So come on out and try it out. If you're on the North side of Austin, don't forget to go check out LoneStarDisc.com or OTB Disc. 
for your favorite Lone Star discs. And there's a lot of good options between the Horny Toad, the Blue Bonnet, the Wrangler, the Tombstone, you name it. There's some great options, some fun naming schemes. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for day five and giveaway number two. So don't miss out. We got some discovery to do, we gotta find out. I don't know if you guys can hear this noise we're hearing right now, but I'm slightly concerned for whoever's over here. <laughs>